what is the optimal treatment at relapse? There's a lot of caveats out here, right? Uh, it really depends on what kind of treatment they've had. You brought up RVD followed by most of our patients would be on REB maintenance. And it really depends on when that relapse happens. Uh, and what is it that a patient is refractory to? Are they refractory to revlimid because they've been on REB maintenance more than likely? And then a lot of the phase three trials which have gotten approved with the revlimid combination don't become relevant in our setting. Are there folks who've had proteasome inhibitor therapy like three years ahead of time and can I rechallenge them with a proteasome inhibitor? The answer to that is yes. Can you reuse treatment you've used before? Absolutely. So a lot of it depends on what kind of a relapse is, is it? Is it a, a biochemical relapse? Is it an aggressive relapse? Are these patients with um, uh, kind of high risk cytogenetic features wherein the relapse is going to be very, um, uh, you know, the relapse is going to be very uh, aggressive and you need to control the disease quickly or is it just a little bit of a paraprotein going up? And depending on all of these, I think one makes a decision on what the next treatment would be. And typically you like to use a drug where a patient is not refractory to. So for example, if you're on REV maintenance, there's adequate data now to transition to a pomalidomide-based regimen. Now whether you use POM with ixazomib or POM with um, bortezomib or use carfilzomib in that space, all kinds of options. The good news is we have lots of good options. Uh, the bad news is there's not one answer which fits all, and you really have to figure out what the patient, how the patient is doing. I think with the data with daratumumab coming more and more upfront, the whole paradigm of how we take care of relapses is going to change, and it's going to change fairly quickly now. Uh, you know, with the Maya trial, data is going to be used upfront, so we. Are we going to be using DERA with PD or are we going to use KPD? My sense is we're going to use more carfilzomib palm decks very quickly. If carfilzomib comes up front, then what's the next one we're going to be using? So this is going to be shifting um, and it's really going to be dependent on what's available to people up front, what they've had up front, and then changing according to uh, what the disease looks like at the time of relapse. In the setting of relapse and refractory myeloma, we have a whole range of options that are now available, some of them uh, commercially for the, for the treatment of our patients, including some, some clinical trials as well. If, if you look at what happens with the first line of therapy, so if you take the, the canonical patient, you're going to go through about eight months of pre-transplant time where patients get their induction and they get to transplant, and the majority of patients can do this, they get their transplant. Also, uh, the majority of patients can complete this, and then you start uh, looking at the maintenance strategy, and you take data, for instance, from the meta-analysis that you're looking at another 50 months of disease control. Um, we're talking about the first uh, relapse being treated sometimes five years out from the moment of diagnosis. And of course, this varies. Sometimes it has to be done sooner. Sometimes it, it could be done later or, or, or never again. At that point, uh, what we're doing is mostly using triplet-based combinations. And, and, and right now, the strategy is really focused on two big approaches. One is a combination of daratumumab plus an imid plus dexamethasone. The reason I left the imid cassette there blank was that uh, there's some uh, discrepancy of what people think should be the right agent for combination. If you have been using lenalidomide for maintenance, should you use len at a higher dose or should you move on to pomalidomide? we frequently do the latter. Now, the second strategy would be the same, but with carfilzomib, so carfilzomib, imid, dexamethasone, uh, with the same considerations for the, for the imid. Uh, there's a number of other options that uh, should be considered in this patient population, but I would say those are the two main ones. We obviously have the data for um, elotuzumab, which has uh, proven to be a very, very well-tolerated uh, medication, so one, one could argue maybe for a very slow indolent relapse, that could be a, a, a very good regimen or, or exasimate because of the aspects of convenience. But that's what we're doing. And then, of course, once the person receives this therapy and uh, experiences a progression, 
what we're going to try to do is do the alternate. If you were using daratumumab, switch to carfilzomib and vice versa. If uh, you begin with a triplet, for example, lenalidomide, bortezomib, dexamethasone, and the disease progresses, then what you need to do, and you, if the uh, disease is progressing while the patient's on therapy, it suggests that it's refractory to those drugs. What's very fortunate is we have multiple options with which to treat that patient. Um, we have second-generation immunomodulatory drug pomalidomide, second-generation proteasome inhibitor, carfilzomib, for example. So one option would be to treat that patient with pomalidomide, carfilzomib, and dexamethasone. We also have another option, which is monoclonal antibodies. And what you have now is similarly either daratumumab or elotuzumab, either one of them now combined with pomalidomide, the second generation immunomodulatory drug, and dexamethasone, is an FDA approved option for such a patient. So in RVD refractory myeloma, we have the opportunity to take pomalidomide dex and either pair it with a second generation proteasome inhibitor, carfilzomib, or monoclonal antibodies, daratumumab or elotuzumab. We have basically six different classes of drugs even today. Now there are some new ones coming, but the point is we really need to keep making and developing novel drugs. That, however, should not delay us from using the best possible drugs early as we can. The best chance we have for overall response, and in particular extent of response, is to treat myeloma at the earliest possible stage when there's the fewest cells and when they're still sensitive to therapy. So what we do is we get a new novel, novel agents and pr approve them in advanced disease, and then they're used in relapse, and then they're used in newly diagnosed patients, and now the novel agents are even being tested in smoldering myeloma. But we should not hold back. We should use scientifically informed combination therapies at the earliest possible opportunity.